Hey everybody, welcome to another Cook Along Live. My name is Robert, I'm your host today, and we're gonna be celebrating one year of cooking along with a, basically, relook at the first Cook Along Live that I ever hosted, which was Taco Tuesday. Now, I think I called it Fiesta Friday a year ago, and uh, we started actually doing these Cook Alongs on a Friday. At the time, I had Friday afternoons available, and I thought it would be a great lead into the weekend to kind of host a cooking show on a Friday afternoon, um, especially going into shelter at home where people were not able to kind of go out and do anything on a Friday night. Felt like it would be kind of a fun fun way to kind of keep in touch with people who we, uh, at that time, didn't know was going to be over a year later, but, uh, you know, kind of kind of stay in touch with people that we formerly were able to go out and hang out with. So Taco Tuesday has always kind of been my thing. Uh, back, in, back in the day, my uh, family, my, my dad, my sister, um, stepmom, really good friend of ours, Hannah, would come over and uh, we'd make ta we'd make tacos. I'd do salsa, guacamole. We'd actually make either the fajitas or the taco meat or whatever. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And so I wanted to kind of start off with that and bring that to everybody that I interact with online. So today we're going to be doing that. We're going to be making tacos. We're even going to be making our own taco seasoning. Hey Pete, how's it going, man? Good to see you on the stream. And we're going to get started with our taco seasoning. Um, straight off. So we're going to get just any kind of a clean container. And I'm going to use a teaspoon for all of the seasoning. We're going to start with a tablespoon of chili powder. I'm going to use a teaspoon because it fits into the actual neck of this little spice container. And, oh, I lied. It doesn't. I'm actually going to switch to a half teaspoon. Now you can just pour into the teaspoon if you want but you're not going to get as accurate a measurement. It's going to spill all over the place. So we're actually going to do six, six half teaspoons. Three teaspoons to a tablespoon. So we need six halves. Make sure that you're using chili powder and not cayenne pepper or any other kind of chili. Chili powder is actually multiple different types of pepper uh, kind of blended into something that's a mild seasoning as opposed to using something that might, like ancho chili is a little bit spicier, cayenne is really hot, you'll, you'll have some nice spicy tacos if that's where you go. So just make sure you're using chili powder. Then we're gonna do a teaspoon of cumin. Teaspoon does fit into this larger container. We're also gonna throw in a teaspoon of garlic powder. Now, my garlic powder has some parsley mixed into it. So it's a combination of garlic powder, some parsley flakes. That's fine. Not going to change the flavor all that much. I'm just going to pop off this little plastic shaker lid and go in for my teaspoon of garlic powder. Now, garlic powder and garlic salt are two different things. If you have garlic salt, maybe add a little bit less because it's going to add or actually just omit the salt later. You'll still get that garlic flavor, but if you add both garlic salt and then salt, you're just going to be almost double salting it and making it really too salty. And we're going to do a teaspoon of our smoked paprika. You can use regular paprika if you don't like the smoky flavor, but I do. So we're going to go ahead and get that in. Now this taco seasoning is really nice because it doesn't have any added cornstarch or any other kind of anti-binding agents. It's just spices. And it's pretty quick to put together. This will actually give you two to three servings depending on how much you want to put into your meat. We're going to go with a quarter teaspoon of dried oregano. Oregano, if you're from across the pond. Like leviosa or leviosa. We got that Harry Potter reference. Five points to Gryffindor. And we're gonna do another quarter teaspoon of onion powder, assuming I can get this little plastic lid off. Come on, buddy. There we go. And so making this just from the spices that you have in your cabinet, pretty easy. And again, doesn't have any of those additives. You know exactly what's going into it. We're also going to throw in a quarter teaspoon of red chili flakes. You can add more if you want it to be a little bit more spicy. 
or totally omit if you want it to be totally mild. I'm also going to throw in a quarter teaspoon of very fine sea salt. And then of course you can adjust the seasoning later once you have it mixed in with the meat. And last but not least, I'm grab a pepper grinder. We're gonna add just a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper, about a quarter teaspoon. Again, if you want more, feel free to add more. And if you don't like that peppery flavor, leave it out. We're gonna give this a quick little mix together. This is, like I said, about three servings of taco seasoning. So depending on how much you add to your meat, or your taco filling, I should say, if you're using Beyond Beef or a uh, portobello mushroom blend, or even turkey or chicken. This is about a half, a, or you'll be using about one third of this to a half of this. Just give it a really good mix. We'll just go ahead and set that aside. Now, one thing you can do with this is you can actually like triple the recipe. Just make yourself a whole little, uh, a uh, jar of it, if you will. And then um, I'll actually take a old and used seasoning container or a spice container and just fill it with this. And then I can just shake it up. Helps you blend it a little bit easier. Just another option for you. All right, so we're done with our seasoning. We'll set that aside, we already have. And we're gonna go ahead and get moving on to our salsa and guacamole. I like to make those first before I actually make the tacos because they take a little bit of time to make. And by kind of setting them aside and putting them in the fridge, you give them a little bit of time to kind of uh, blend the flavors and become a little bit more homogenized, I guess is the word I'm looking for, where everything just tastes like one thing, as opposed to tasting like individual tomatoes or uh, avocados. So I've got a nice clean little mixing bowl here. I'm gonna kind of keep it on one side of my cutting board. And we will switch to that camera there. And get started by chopping up some tomatoes. So I specified in the recipe, if you uh, follow me on Instagram or Facebook, or uh, I guess that's where it gets posted, you will see that I mentioned that we should be using Roma tomatoes. Now there's no real reason to use Roma over anything else, other than the fact that Roma tomatoes, even when they're like sitting on a shelf for a while, they tend to have a more tomato flavor. So if you want kind of a more, more flavorful salsa, especially off season like right now, Roma tomatoes are usually pretty consistent. The other option is you can use some cherry tomatoes. Those tend to be a little bit more sweet, so you get a slightly sweeter salsa, but you also get a lot of that tomato flavor. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of cut through all of these and quarter them. So I'm setting them stem side down, so I've got the little uh, flower end kind of pointing up. Just cut it right through in half, lay it out, and then just cut each of these in half. And then I'll take each of these quarters and just kind of slide them off to one side on the cutting board. I like to kind of do one type of cutting at a time so I can focus on just doing one thing and not having to continuously switch between different styles of cutting. So we're making a pico de gallo style salsa here, where we're gonna have little chunks of everything in it. If you wanna make a more blended salsa, just toss everything into a blender and blitz it a couple times and you will get a nice blended salsa. We've got all of our tomatoes quartered. Now what I'm going to do is de-seed them. The reason we de-seed them is because the salsa is already gonna be pretty wet. A lot of the juice from the tomatoes and like the lemon juice and things like that, they're gonna make the salsa pretty wet. And you don't really have much flavor in the center part here with the seeds. So what we want to do is just kind of get rid of those bits that aren't really contributing at all to the salsa. And I'm going to do that just by kind of slicing underneath the stem end here, or the flower end, I should say, and then just kind of laying the tomato flat and cutting straight across, removing the end that has the actual stem bit in it. I've got a nice little tomato flat here that I can then dice up. And I'm just going to kind of stack those 
off to the side. Now you can take these kind of tomato middles, if you will, and set them aside. You can actually save the seeds and start those in your garden if you have a particular variety of tomato that you eat that you really, really like. Or you can just toss them, or you can compost them. Just be careful because you may get lots and lots of little tomatoes growing in your compost pile. So, how has everybody's week been? Hopefully it's been a productive one. Good things are happening in the world. I know that the uh, vaccines for the COVID uh, well, vaccines, I guess, for lack of a better word, are starting to be distributed. How are they going in your neck of the woods? Have you been vaccinated yet? Or are you on a list? I'm out in California in the U.S., and unfortunately for me, I am not 65 yet, and I am not in a group that's been classified as essential yet, although real estate professionals should be, I believe, getting that designation soon. But uh, how are you guys doing? And then are the people in your lives getting protected? That's a pretty big ticket item nowadays. I'm just going to go ahead and keep on slicing out these seeds. You'll notice that I can kind of develop a rhythm doing the one thing at a time as opposed to stopping to then dice everything and then kind of resetting to go back into removing the seeds or quartering the tomatoes. So you'll kind of form a little bit of a rhythm as you go through. if you kind of focus on one aspect of it at a time. And we're dicing all of the tomatoes here. So we're making some guacamole. We're going to use about a tomato's worth of diced tomatoes in the guacamole. But rather than do, again, two things like tomatoes for salsa and then tomatoes for guacamole, we're just going to dice everything up and then take a couple of spoonfuls and set them on the side to put in the guacamole. There's a piece on the ground. One of the hazards of cooking at home. And so yeah, Taco Tuesday used to be a huge thing back when, uh, back when I was a little bit younger. Actually, just about 18 years ago for me. I I'm pushing uh, 39 years old this year, and right about, well, I guess it was, probably would have been closer to like 15 years ago, making Taco Tuesday. One of my favorite things to make, one of, I think, the most fun things to have people over and, and serve, because you've got the tacos, you've got the, the salsa and the guacamole. And you can have those kind of uh, group discussions. Give me just a sec to clean up that tomato that I dropped. That way I'm not walking through tomato goober. All right. And now we'll go ahead and start dicing. So I've got all of my things lined up on one side of my cutting board. Um, all of the little quarters that have been de-seeded. Now I'm just going to take them, line them up long ways like so, and then just start kind of cutting through them. And I'll do two or three or four at a time before I dice them. Again, kind of getting into that rhythm of doing one thing at a time, one motion at a time. Your brain does take a second to reset once you kind of shift from doing one thing to another. So just kind of minimizing all of that task switching. There we go. So I've got all of these kind of cut up into long strips. We'll turn them 90 degrees and then run the knife through them this way to get things nice and diced. Take your time when you're doing this, especially if you're not super comfortable using a knife yet. There's no rush and you don't have to go very fast. The speed will come with time as you get used to the various motions. 
of chopping. I like to kind of take my hand, form it into almost like a little claw, use it to kind of hold down whatever it is that I'm chopping, and then I use the flap of my knuckle to kind of guide the knife, and I slide my, my fingers back just a little bit at a time, making sure to keep my thumb at the back, so kind of like this, and then using the front of my knuckles as a guide. That's a pretty quick way to go through something. And someone is texting me. So two seconds while I take a look at that. And see if maybe there's something wrong with the stream. Do -do -do. Nope. Nothing important. I should probably just keep my phone on mute and ignore it. We'll come back here to dicing up our tomatoes. And you can do one at a time or two at a time. Really kind of depends on how good you are with your knife, how confident you are with dicing. And then once you get a nice little pile of tomato bits, something like this, we'll just kind of scoop them up with our knife and put them right in our bowl. There we are. And we will continue. The salsa and the guacamole are pretty much the longest bit of making tacos if you're going to go all out like this. A lot of chopping, a lot of dicing, but fairly relaxing, honestly, especially if you kind of figure out what that rhythm is. And you can dice through all of this stuff really quickly once you get the hang of it. I'm curious, how many of those of you who are watching right now have made tacos in the past? And what are kind of your tips and tricks for building a salsa or putting together a guacamole? Actually, now that I think about it, I think I started doing tacos longer than 18 years ago. I think it would have been more like 20, 20 years ago. I think I'm getting my timelines mixed up in my head. Because I was making tacos before I moved across the country to Georgia, and then I continued to do that while I was in Georgia. And that was about 12 and 12 years ago. And I'd been making tacos for quite a while before that, so it probably was closer to 20. But I just, I, I'm a taco guy. You can make these tacos, they'll keep in the fridge for quite a while. Um, and by quite a while, I mean, I've never had them go bad on me. I usually eat them in the next day or two. Um, so also a great thing to make if you're on your own and just want something that will last for a couple of days. Cook one day and have lunch and dinner for another another two days after. And this is kind of the, so I'll say, most basic way that I make tacos or make uh, salsa guac and, and everything that goes along with them. There are other, other ways you can do it, like you can get steaks and actually cook off the steaks in almost carne asada style. Um, you can grind your own meat. There's a bunch of different, different ways you can approach this same beast. But I usually find that this kind of basic way is 
Just a nice, easy way to make yourself a bunch of food. You can also even make your own tortillas, like uh, uh, flour tortillas if you want to start from scratch, scratch, or if you already have store-bought tortillas, turn those into crispy shells. really a lot of different ways you can approach this iconic dish. <laughs> yes, Cindy, you guys let me do it. That's perfect. Hey, Shannon, how's it going? Good to see you. Tacos are one of my favorite things. I think they should be one of the, one of the food groups, should just be tacos. So here we are coming up to the end of our tomatoes. I'm just going to go ahead and chop up the last two flats. And then we'll dice all of this up together. There we go. Now the decision becomes, we're going to be using some of these tomatoes for our guacamole. What else can we use while making our guacamole? Because we're just going to go ahead and chop those up next. And we can mix our tomatoes and whatever those ingredients are together so that when we start adding them to the guacamole, like we can, we can scoop out of the bowl once we have just those basic ingredients together. But once we start adding things that are salsa only, it kind of just becomes salsa. But if we start kind of planning and thinking ahead, some of the cilantro I can start using and putting into my guacamole. That I, I put cilantro in my guacamole. Um, maybe some of the lemon juice. I might mix some of that in here as well. And then I can just kind of scoop a bit of that out and then have it ready for the guacamole before I finish up the salsa. So kind of leveraging the fact that we're doing that right now so we can save some time later. Go ahead and just dry off the cutting board. Get some of these seeds off and into garbage. And there we go. You guys see we have a nice... Nice bowl full of tomatoes. I'm going to go ahead and chop up some cilantro next. My stepmom, Cindy, does not like cilantro. And she's not here, so I'm making cilantro. <laughs> and all I'm going to do is really just kind of bunch it up on the cutting board and then just kind of, as best I can, roll it into a little bundle on, on itself. It's not going to look pretty. It is just going to be a bunch of herbs. But... This is what I want to do, and then again, I'm going to kind of use my hand as, a, as like a little claw, kind of something like this, and just kind of press down on it. Not very hard, but just enough to hold it in place. And then again, just use kind of the flat end of my knuckles to just kind of cut once through it in this direction. And just kind of work my hands backwards until I cut through everything. And then all I'm going to do at this point just cut it across. I know that I've made one set of cuts this way, and now I'm just going to go 90 degrees this way. I'm going to take my fingers, the three fingers of my left hand, basically take that little crease in between my knuckles, use that to kind of anchor the tip of my knife, and then I'm just going to lift up my right hand and put it down, like so, on the cutting board. Keep your thumb on your left hand back, and then this is just what we're going to do as we move the cutting board and rock it forward through our cilantro. You don't have to go very hard, you don't have to go very fast, but what you're going to do is just dice through it. And you should have some pretty, nicely diced cilantro here. Now I'm actually going to do that with a little bit more, because this is going to be for mostly for the salsa. Some will transfer over into the guacamole, but I'm going to also add a little bit more to the guacamole. And I'm going to take this and just kind of scrape it up to the top of my cutting board. And then do the same thing with my second batch of cilantro. And a one cut this way. Fingers on the knife and cut through it at a 90 degree angle. And then I've got two batches of cilantro. So one is a nice quarter cup-ish amount of cilantro for my salsa. A little bit more because some of it will be coming out and going into the guacamole. And then I've got another little batch over here that'll add to the guacamole once we add our tomato mixture to it in just a bit. Take this, that into the tomatoes. 
And there we go. It is hard to believe that we started one year ago doing this cook-along series with tacos. The time has just gone by very quickly. I'm going to take one of my lemons I have. I'm going to just kind of roll it on my cutting board to kind of pre-squeeze it inside. And then I'm going to be cutting it into thirds, like this. Got one third, two thirds, and then the center. And you'll notice that a couple of the seeds kind of squeezed out from that middle piece, which is fine. And if you look at the sides, the, the side thirds, the seeds, if you have any, should be right here on top. And you should very easily be able to kind of scrape them out. Like so. Just kind of scraping them out with the knife. And they'll just kind of pop right out. You're not losing very much of the lemon. And now we can squeeze the lemon directly into our salsa bowl. Keep an eye out just in case another, you know, rogue seed comes out or something. But that should get rid of most of your seeds in the lemon. And it looks like one or two are hiding from me. I'll just grab a little spoon and scoop them out. There we go. Just grab my spoon here. Grab these seeds. Scoop them out. But that's a lot easier than cleaning out a, a reamer or cleaning out any other kind of uh, lemon press. Just scoop out a couple of seeds with a spoon. I'm going to do the same thing with these other lemon halves. The center, if you can squeeze it, try and get as many seeds out of it as you can before you squeeze it in. If there's nothing left, just toss it. And I'm just going to kind of take a quick look for any seeds. Nothing on that one. And then there's about three or four in this half. I'm just going to scrape those out. And then again, I'm going to squeeze this all in. And if I see any rogue seeds, I will scoop them out. There's one. There's two. There we are. We'll just go fishing for seeds. That was easy. Cool. So these are basically the bits of my salsa that I'm also going to be using in my guacamole. So what I'm going to do is grab a little bowl over here. I'm going to mix up my salsa here, or at least the bits that I have here that are going to be shared between the two dishes. You'll notice I'm not seasoning this yet, and that's fine. I just want to add the ingredients to my guacamole. I can always adjust the seasoning once I've got that going. And get our cilantro and our tomatoes mixed through. And then I'm going to scoop out just about a chopped tomato's worth that I can use into my guacamole later. And there we go. I'm just going to set this aside for now and continue with my salsa. So, next step for the salsa for me is usually the peppers. I always use one serrano and one jalapeno. This time I got a pretty darn big serrano pepper, so I might actually uh, cut this in half and only use part of it. Depends on how hot it is. And I always throw the full jalapeno in. For some reason, especially over the last year, I've noticed that jalapenos just are not spicy enough for salsa. They really don't add that much of a kick, and it might just be my area, but um, I'm always adding more spice. So. Best way to uh, cut up a jalapeno, just chop off the top, either compost or discard. And then I'm going to put the flat side down so that it kind of sits up on its own. And then just slide my knife right down through it in half. So I get two nice halves of a jalapeno. And then you can deseed if you want. The uh, white pith in the middle here is kind of where a lot of the heat is. And possibly deseeding it is why they're not super hot. But it's also kind of bitter and adds a little bit of an off flavor to your salsa. So it's generally a good thing to get rid of it. I'll just do that with both halves. Again, kind of sticking to one uh, process at a time, if you will. And now we're going to do the same thing with these that we did with our tomatoes. Lay them flat. And then just take our knife. Cut some nice. 
thin strips. And I'll do that with both halves of the pepper. And I've got a nice bunch of little julienne pepper strips that I can turn 90 degrees and dice finely. And add to my salsa. Now it's up to you whether you want to add peppers to your guacamole or not. I prefer to have the pepper flavor in the salsa and leave the guacamole to kind of be like a creamy, almost cooling side dish. So you get the spice, you get the cooling. But totally up to you how you want to dole out the heat, <laughs> as it will be. And then same thing with my serrano. Just going to kind of cut off the top, set the serrano flat, and then take my knife and very carefully Cut through the top to have it, and then we will be seated. Sometimes when you're laying it flat, you'll actually kind of like what I just did. You'll you'll crack it in half like so, or I've got almost like a a little cut in the middle. That's fine. We're going to be dicing it down anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Plus, it helps it lay flat a little bit better. You'll also notice that as I'm kind of cutting out the pith, sometimes I'll get a little bit of the little bit of the tip kind of coming with it. And I don't worry too much about that because we've got plenty of pepper. Don't worry about it. Go ahead and kind of cut this into some nice strips. Now we'll do our 90 degree thing and icy, nicey, finey. Like so. Yep, Cindy, that is exactly the same technique that I use for tabbouleh. Whether I'm doing parsley or cucumbers or tomatoes for that or anything. This is, in my opinion, the most efficient way to kind of dice things up. And then you can really control how finely you want it diced just by controlling how thick or thin those strips are of whatever it is that you're cutting up. There we are. We'll just scrape everything up and into our salsa bowl. And I'll use a spatula and mix it all together. There we are. And last but certainly not least, got a white onion. I basically take this and cut it in half, like so. And then I'll take one half, whichever the bigger half is, and use that for my salsa, and take the other half, and we're going to put that actually into the meat uh, once we start cooking the tacos. Or I should say the filling, because you might be using Beyond Beef, you might be using uh, portobello mushrooms, or turkey, or chicken, or whatever it is that you're using. I like to use a little bit of onions to kind of fill it out and give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a different flavor. It gives it a little bit of depth. I usually cut off once I've cut it in half. I cut off the uh, papery end of the onion. And then I usually just peel off the outer layer because it's often where the bruising is, it's where the soft bits are, and sometimes it's even kind of leathery itself or papery. And I've got a nice half an onion. Now, as far as dicing the onion, I usually put my palm flat on the top, take my knife and cut about a third of the way up, and I go, I don't know, maybe 90% of the way through the onion. So something like that. I'll gently pull the knife out, and then I'll go about two-thirds of the way up and do the same thing. Just be careful that you're cutting flat and that your palm is nowhere near uh, where your knife is. Same thing, about 90% of the way through. Pull it out, 
and then I just kind of cut vertically through the onion, like so. And this is where you're controlling how thin the dicing is. The thinner you're able to kind of slice these little vertical cuts into the onion, the thinner the actual dice will be when you turn it 90 degrees and finish the dicing. So there we are. And you'll notice the little bits that kind of also come out of the front. Don't worry about them. Just kind of set them aside because you're going to be able to dice them down a little bit later. Here's my onion. I'm just going to go through and dice it nice and fine. Again, don't worry too much about how fast you're doing this. Focus more on technique. The speed will come. And I'm just slowing myself down to show you how this goes. Be very careful with an onion with your thumb. You'll notice mine is kind of sticking out to the side. You really, really want to, as soon as you can, make sure that it's behind the rest of your fingers so you can create a barrier and don't accidentally nip yourself. I've done that so many times and it's never fun. There we are. Now, if you see any big bits like that, set them aside with the other uh, bits that kind of squeezed out the front and we'll get those together and kind of dice them. But most of your onions should be fairly finely diced. Go ahead and scoop these up into the salsa. Like so. And now we'll grab the heel of our onion, which is this last little bit here that's got the root end on it. Lay it flat on the sides, maybe one or two slices through it, almost all the way up to the root. And then on the uh, kind of side that we've already kind of cut through, just make sure that your little cuts go all the way through. And what you can do at this point, put the cut side or the, the top side, I guess, where you're going to cut first. And you can just slice all of that off. And then with each side, same thing. Dice off the little wings. And then you're left with just a little bit of onion. And if you really want, cut that all off. We've got some really nice diced onion. And you're left with just the little itty bitty root at the end. Discard. Again, if you have any large pieces, just kind of set them aside for now. Everything else into the salsa bowl. Now these little bits, just kind of wrangle them into one spot. And just slice through them. There we go. Onion is done, which means that our salsa is more or less done. Just mix everything together, give it a couple of tastes, and then we'll adjust our seasoning. And we'll get started on our guacamole. Guacamole is probably one of my favorite parts of Taco Tuesday. And the thing is, I used to hate avocados. I used to hate guacamole. And I really kind of developed a flavor for it when I started doing taco night. Um, every week. And I actually started finding out that you can get those avocados that kind of have a really rich nutty flavor, or you can get those avocados that are almost citrusy, like they have almost like an apple flavor. If I have guacamole made with the second type, the apple flavored ones, I'm not a huge fan. But if I have guacamole that's made with the really, really nice nutty flavor, like the really, really um, kind of rich ones, that is some good stuff. All right, so we haven't added any seasoning to this yet. And what I'm going to do is grab some salt and just kind of give it a nice light dusting. And then get all of that mixed through. I'm going to give it two tastes. One off of a spoon and then one with a chip. And the reason that I do both is I like to get kind of a base level of seasoning 
a base level of saltiness. And then usually tortilla chips have some salt on them and it can actually make them a little bit too salty. So what I'll do is I'll paste for initial seasoning. I'm gonna grab some of these large onion chunks and get them out. Hmm. It's actually pretty good. And then I'll grab the same thing with just a small chip. Just make sure that it's still balanced. Yep. I'm happy with that. Any of those little large bits, just chop them a little finer, put them back in. I could probably add a little bit more lemon to this. But honestly, now that we've added the salt, a lot of the moisture is going to come out. So all of those flavors are going to kind of melt together. So I'm just going to go ahead and plate it up into a little salsa bowl. And as is often the case, I have, I think, more salsa than my little serving bowl is going to be able to take, which is great, because it means that I get more salsa for me. There we go. I'm just going to gently tap it on the top to see if we can fill in some of those little, little voids underneath the surface. But I'm always happy to have a nice overflowing bowl of salsa. There we go. So salsa is done. Generally speaking, if I'm doing this for like a dinner party or something like that, I'll go ahead and take this, cover it with the uh, cling film, throw it in the fridge for an hour where it cooled down. In this case, I'm just going to set it to the side. It is going to have a chance to kind of uh, develop some of those flavors, get some of that... Uh, that sharing going in between the different veggies that are in there. But um, if it has like a good hour to rest, it usually comes together really, really nicely. I'm going to give my bowl a really quick rinse, and uh, we'll be right back. So when you guys make salsa, is it pretty much the same process? I'm curious. Have you made salsa before? Or pico de gallo, whatever you want to call it. And do you do yours differently? I know a couple of people who put um, garlic in their salsa and some red wine vinegar. Um, I've tried to play around with that, and I can never quite make it taste the same. So I tend to avoid that too much. But I'm curious, what does your salsa look like? All right, so we're just going to reuse the same bowl for our guacamole. I'm just going to take the... Actually, I'm not. I'm going to set this aside, and I'm going to go ahead and get my avocados uh, split and into the bowl. So I'm using some really tiny avocados, but this is all I could find at the store. They do feel like they're ripe, so I actually have five avocados instead of the three that I put in the recipe. Usually I'm working with medium avocados, and they're about, I don't know, one and a half times the size of these guys. But you got to work with what you got, right? So I like to just kind of split them in half by rolling them around the sharp end of the knife, kind of knocking them apart like so, lightly tapping into the seed and twisting to get the seed out. And then what I do is I take my knife, be careful with this. If you're not comfortable with your knife, use a butter knife or use um, the back end of the knife. But I'll just kind of very lightly score through the avocado not through the skin, just through the meat. And if you're working with a ripe avocado, you shouldn't have to press very hard at all to do that. I'll do that with both halves, just like so. And I'll just do three, on, three vertical, three horizontal. And then you can either just turn it around and kind of push, squeeze it together, and you'll get a lot of the avocado meat out, like so leaving you with just the skin. Or if you want to be a little bit more thorough, just take your spoon and just scoop it out. It should scoop out and separate. You'll have a nice, quick way to get your avocado into your bowl. 
we'll just keep working on these. Getting them scooped out. You'll notice that once you really kind of get a rhythm, once you've been doing this a couple of times, you can go through these pretty quickly. And generally what I'll do is I'll split them all first, I'll have them all first, I'll pop off all the seeds, then I'll scoop them all. And again, you'll see that I'm kind of doing a bit of task switching here, where I have to set my knife down, I have to pick up the avocado. It takes a little bit more time. And your brain starts kind of trying to figure out what the next step is. Whereas if I just take the avocado, go through it, that's the step, go to the next one, go through it. Next one, go through it. Split, split, split. Grab the seed out, seed out, and seed out. And then I can just kind of breeze through the process here, as opposed to having to stop and reconfigure for each one. Just tends to make things a bit more efficient. And that little black bit, I'm just going to scoop out. It looks like it goes a little bit deeper. And that goes all the way to the skin, so I'll actually just remove that bit. There we are. There we are. And didn't quite get this done. So we'll just do that. Now I can very quickly just kind of scoop through my avocados, not having to worry about setting the spoon down. Yeah, that makes things a little bit more efficient. Just focus on one thing at a time. Works for everything, whether you're making tabbouleh or guacamole or what. Kind of focusing on one process at a time makes things a lot more efficient. Hey, Aiden, how's it going, man? Now, we've got all of our uh, avocado in here. My next thing that I'm going to add is just a little bit of salt. I like to give it a nice dusting. I'm not adding my tomatoes yet, or my onions, or my um, cilantro that we've got in this little bowl on the side yet. What I am going to do, though, is add my garlic. I'm going to set my salt aside and grab a clove or two of garlic. That's a pretty good sized clove, so I'm just going to use one. What I'm going to do is set it down on my cutting board, take my knife, lay it flat, gently tap. That should release the skin. You can peel it real easily. I'll take off the root end. Now what I'm going to do, take the flat end of my knife again, and I'm going to smash it down like so. Give it another one over here. Really kind of crush my garlic down. And then I'm going to chop through it very quickly, like so. Add just a touch of salt to this. And now take my knife. Three fingers on the top, kind of spread them out like so, and then use the knife to really crush the garlic down into a paste. You might be thinking, why are you doing this instead of using a garlic press? And I will give you the very simple answer. I don't like cleaning my garlic press. <laughs> this is actually, plus, you'll notice I didn't have to stop and go and find the garlic press, pull it out, load it with the garlic. I've already got my garlic paste here. And I don't have to go through and clean up a garlic press. All I have to do is rinse off my knife, wipe down my cutting board, my garlic is done. So, you'll notice that we didn't add any tomatoes here. We haven't added uh, very much in the form of crushable vegetables to our guacamole. And that's because we're going to be using a potato masher to smash up our avocados and actually turn the guacamole into our dip. 
Now, if you add your tomatoes and then start using a potato masher, you're gonna end up with a lot of smashed tomato bits in your guacamole. Same thing if you start adding your onions. If you start putting green onions in there now or your cilantro, you're actually gonna bruise the uh, delicate greens of those vegetables. So I like to put everything here that I want to kind of be mashed up, then I'll mash it, then I'll add everything else. The other thing that I am gonna add while we're here is my lemon juice for the guacamole. Again, just kind of give it a nice little pre-roll on your cutting board. We'll cut it down into thirds. If you see any seeds, just kind of pop them out like so. And then we can just squeeze right in. And if you find any extra seeds, just scoop them out with a, with a spoon. But most of your seeds should come out when you cut them into thirds. And again, this way I'm just not getting a bunch of other kitchen utensils dirty. Just a nice, easy way to kind of juice a lemon. Yeah. I juice as much as I can through the skin. And then I'll go through and kind of squish out all of the rest from the flesh. And of course, you can use a sieve or something if you want to catch the seeds. But again, that's just more stuff to clean. And I just find that it's way easier to scoop out a seed or two if I need to. It takes less time to do that than it does to wash a strainer. And there we go. Guacamole base is done. We grab our potato masher. Just go ahead and give this a nice little squishing. And here is where you get to control how chunky you want your guacamole. If you like chunky, go for chunky. If you want it to be more smooth, just keep mashing it a little longer. I like mine to be more or less smooth, probably mostly smooth. So I'm just going to go for a little bit. And I like using lemon over lime when I'm making guacamole because the acid in the lemon tends to preserve the green color of guacamole a little bit better than if I'm using lime. So this is not going to turn brown as quickly. There we go. It's all coming together. Give it a little stir to kind of get all the garlic moved around, mixed around. Tap off as much as we can. Set that aside for now. And we'll give this a little taste. Yum. Perfect amount of seasoning. I'm going to go ahead and make my tomatoes and the initial cilantro. Get those into the bowl. Give it a nice little mix. Now, we did not add any seasoning to our tomatoes and cilantro. If you slightly over salted your avocado before you mashed it, the amount of tomato and cilantro you added not being seasoned should kind of tone that down a little bit. There we are. Set that aside. I'm going to go ahead and cut up the rest of my cilantro. Yep, I have a bunch of lemon juice on my cutting board. That's fine. It's actually going to help to kind of pull out some of that garlic flavor from when we smashed it. as well as some of this cilantro. Plus, the lemon will help keep the cilantro from bruising. I'm just going to cut it right in any residual juice, and then just scoop it up with the juice into the bowl. There we go. 
You can absolutely use a blender, but then you have to clean the blender. Way easier to just rinse off the potato masher, in my opinion. And I know that you can clean a blender by filling it with water and then just blitzing it a couple times. That works pretty well. Yet, it's still another thing to clean. Go ahead and get our cilantro mixed through. And then last, but certainly not least, our green onion. You know, if you use a blender, you also run the risk. Well, I shouldn't say run the risk. It's very, very easy to get the avocado to where it's not actually blending together, right? You have to add a lot of moisture so that it actually blends smoothly. Using a potato masher, it doesn't matter. You can just mash it up. You can also get one of those stick style blenders and 100% do the same thing. Um, really, really up to you. I would rather not clean something else. <laughs> Call me lazy, call me efficient. I don't care what you call me, as long as I get to eat tacos at the end of the day. So I've got most of my guacamole done. We're gonna grab some green onions here. I've got some pretty chonkin' green onions here. You could say they are thick with a couple of C's at the end. I'm gonna take this and basically kinda each one of these, figure out where the stems overlap. So I should see, this one has two stems, but if you turn it a certain way, you're only gonna see like one. And I'm going to cut through it this way so that I cut it in half, essentially. Same thing with the next one, which will be a little bit easier. It's actually straight. Some of them will be curved. Some of them will be straight. And just try and cut them in half as best you can. You don't have to worry about it being perfect. There we go. and just try to kind of orient them so that they're all curved in the same general direction. The reason we're doing this is so that we don't have little onions rolling around on our cutting board. There are a couple of different ways to kind of achieve the same goal. Actually, in last week's cook along, we just cut kind of on a bias. The difference here is in guacamole, you're not going to notice whether the onions are are round or oval or just strips of onion. So I would rather just do this and cut them more finely because you're not worried about the presentation of the onion. Now I'm going to take this and just cut it down as fine as I can. Again, using my hand in kind of a claw shape. And gently slicing through my green onion for some really, really thin green onion shards, I guess is a good way to say it. Also, at the end, you just went out to uh, take a look at the International Space Station. I think you said it was flying over flying over Montreal. I'm curious, uh, did you get a pretty good, pretty good look at it or, or not? And then did it just dip across the sky or... All right. Now be careful with the green onions being a little bit spicy. My eyes are starting to water. But I'm not quite falling yet. There we go. Last little bit. Good. Scoop our onion into our guacamole. If you don't like that much onion, don't add that much onion. The amount is really up to you. Guacamole is not something that's going to be ruined by a uh, ratio difference. It's really going to be up to your personal taste. You can also add a little bit of cumin if you have a guacamole that's more on the apple -y side, like the kind of citrusy guacamole, the one that I said I didn't really like the flavor of, although it only helps to a certain extent. Um, I've done experiments where I've actually dumped like a half thing of cumin in, and uh, that apple -y flavor will actually start getting 
it gets more and more subtle to a certain point, then it actually gets more pronounced where you're like, okay, I can taste that citrusy flavor and I can taste the cumin totally separate from each other and it just doesn't work. So maybe a teaspoon and a half if you need it. Uh, in this case, my avocados are, are very, very tasty, nice and rich and, and nutty. So I'm not gonna add any, but you can. Go ahead and get this nice and mixed through. Okay, that's a good uh, that's a good way to look at it, Etienne. But I, I don't have a blender to clean. Go ahead and give this one more taste. Pretty good. Gonna add a little bit more salt. Like I said, adding the tomatoes and the cilantro um, really kind of mellows out the initial seasoning, but I'm not going to need very much. That was maybe, maybe a half a teaspoon. Give it another little mix through. There we are. And then I'll give it a taste with a chip just to see how the salt on the chip interacts with it. That's cool. I love seeing the International Space Station. And that is good guacamole. I'm going to go ahead and, very similar to the salsa, Scoop this into a little serving bowl. This is the same bowl that I had the uh, little bit of tomato in earlier. There we are. I like to just kind of chop it down with my spatula. Like so. And there we are. So again, if you're making this for kind of like a, a dinner party or like a friend gathering or something like that, I'll take this along with the salsa, put it in the fridge for at least an hour just to kind of let the flavors come together and kind of develop a little bit better. But since we're not doing that, we're just going to keep moving. Set those over in the sink. I will put my potato masher in that bowl as well. And then that's all I really got to clean. One bowl, a spatula, and a potato masher. Not bad. All right. Go ahead and take my little towel here. Wipe off my cutting board. Wipe off the knife. And we will continue with the main event, the tacos themselves. All right. So that's dirty. I'm not going to put it back in my pocket. We're going to start with our other half of an onion. So we cut our onion in half. Half of it went into the salsa. This half is actually going to go into the pan with our um, meat or whatever the filling is. Let me go ahead and take off the... Uh, flower end of the onion or the the uh, stalk end of the onion. Same thing as what we did with our salsa. I'm going to actually cut this down into little dices flat on top of the onion, come up about a third of the way, cut back about 90% oh, of the way back, and then do it one more time, two-thirds of the way up, and coming through about 90% of the way. Remember, 90% of the way down here is different than 90% of the way up here because the onion is curved. So don't try to go back the exact same distance with both cuts. Now from here, I'm going to just kind of cut through the top. This one I don't need to be as fine as for the salsa, but I still want to make sure that it's like a quarter inch, or I guess an eighth of an inch in this case. 
You don't have to do this for your tacos. I just think that this adds a little bit of extra flavor to the meat as it's cooking, especially when the onions kind of start to um, caramelize just a little bit. You get a little bit of a more complex flavor than just beef. I'll go ahead and just dice this down. And we're gonna do the same thing with a clove of garlic. Any larger slices of onion, just kind of pick them out and we'll get to those in a sec. And do your best to keep your thumb behind your uh, knuckles, but you'll notice that mine kind of floats. So just be conscious of where your thumb is in, in relation to the knife. And a lot of that is just because this is an onion and it's round. It's a little bit easier when you're working with strips of something. There we go. Mostly onion. And we'll do the same thing with this heel so that we can get as much onion as we can. In this case, I'll just do some vertical cuts to make sure that it's going all the way through. And then we will slice down like so. Take our edges, cut through, and dice up to the root. And then the same with this last little bit. Cut through. And then this is the only waste we have, just a little itty bitty bit of the heel. We've got all of this onion here that can go in to the skillet. There we are. So at this point, I'm gonna get my skillet going. I'm gonna do medium high heat, let it kind of warm up for a second. I am gonna find some olive oil or extra virgin. This is not going super high, so you can use extra virgin if you want. Um, you can also use peanut oil. I like to use peanut oil for things that I don't want to add a lot of flavor to. Add a little bit in there so that we can get a good barrier on the bottom of that pan. And then while we're waiting on that, we'll find one more garlic clove. Another big one if you can, if not, a couple of small ones. There we go, we'll give it a nice little love tap to get the get the clothing off, if you will. Peel off the skin. Sometimes it needs just another little hug. There we go. Now this one I'm gonna dice up. So I'm actually gonna take it, put it down, kind of dice through it. I want the slightly larger pieces of garlic. They won't burn when they're getting cooked, if they're a little bit bigger. Now we'll just kind of dice through this. Keep it separate from the onion. Garlic definitely cooks faster than onion does. So we're not going to add them at the same time. But uh, might as well go ahead and get it chopped up while we wait. I'm going to set that there. My olive oil is starting to smoke. Go ahead and do that. And there we go. We got our olive oil or our, our peanut oil in our in our pan here. It's up to medium high heat. We're gonna go ahead and just scoop in our onion. Let that cook for about a minute, maybe two, and then add our garlic. And then on top of that, we've got a nice pound of... I'm using ground beef. You can be using ground turkey, ground chicken, portobello mushroom that's been, you know, diced up finely. Um, Beyond beef, any of the veggie meat products. With tacos, they all 
actually taste really good. Go ahead and get that going. Add uh, maybe about a teaspoon of salt. Not too much. Then you can toss to mix or use a spatula or a wooden spoon. Grab a little wooden spoon here. And I want these to kind of start getting translucent, but I don't want to get too much browning on them. We're not trying to caramelize these down too much. You get a little bit of golden brown, that's fine, but really we're just trying to kind of cook off some of that sharpness. I like to kind of set the spoon on the side. It's a wooden spoon. It's not going to absorb any heat. Just make sure you're not reaching over the steam. Uh, you can burn yourself depending on how hot the onions are. There we are. They are cooking down nicely. And once they start to kind of get a little bit translucent and soft, which is about where they're getting right now, starting to brown just a bit, we are going to add our garlic. Let's grab our little garlic pile, add it right to the middle, and then get it nice and mixed through. And your kitchen should start smelling like an amazing taqueria. All of these yummy, yummy aromas going around. There we are. I'm going to go ahead and kind of clear out the middle of my pan. And we will get our filling. Cooking. So as soon as you add it to the pan, go ahead and start uh, kind of breaking it up. thoroughly brown this and then add about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of our taco seasoning that we just put together at the beginning of this episode. <clears throat> so we've got our awesome taco seasoning right here. Uh, we're not going to use all of this. This is way more than what we're going to need for this batch of meat, but we're going to add enough to give it a bit of flavor, a little bit of seasoning, and then we're going to add about a half cup of water just to kind of get things mixed through. And as your meat kind of cooks, just, or as your filling cooks, I should say, since I don't know what exactly it is that you're cooking with, you go ahead and just keep breaking it up using your spoon or your spatula or whatever it is that you are stirring with. Now I'm not going to start incorporating the onions until I've gotten this broken down and mostly cooked. Because again, I don't want to mash the onions up. They're already diced to a, a, a nice size. I really want to kind of get my meat broken down first so that I'm not mashing everything together. There we 
we go. And I'm stirring the meat around in the middle, trying not to bring in any of the onions, but just to kind of see how, you know, like what size is it, really? Is it broken down enough? And any pieces that I see that are a bit big, I'll just kind of break them up. And there we go. Everything's sized about where I want it. So I'll start incorporating some of that onion and the garlic wherever it has disappeared to in. And let it cook together. I'm just going to let that kind of cook for, I don't know, maybe another minute or two, and start looking at my taco seasoning, get about a tablespoon ready to go, and then we'll mix that in. I'm also going to go and grab, again, about a half a cup of water. And we're going to be adding that just to kind of keep things moist as we're mixing our seasoning through the meat. Scrape down the sides, get all of those onions, any garlic or any extra filling that kind of is sticking up there, back down into the heat. And nice and well incorporated. So while we're waiting on our meat, we can start kind of putting together some of our toppings. Um, I just go pretty, pretty uh, basic with some cheese and some chopped up iceberg lettuce. So I'm going to start with the iceberg lettuce. And I basically just take the head of lettuce. I've already peeled off a couple of the outer leaves that were, you know, not ideal. It's the easiest way to clean a piece of piece of iceberg. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of cut it in half. And then on one of the sides, I will cut this half in half. And then I will flatten it, put it on one side, doesn't really matter which side. And then I'll just kind of come in and shave. The lettuce on the cut side. Like so. And then as you kind of get close to the end, it's going to start bunching up. So I'll just kind of flatten it out as best I can and just slice through it this way. And then that way you're not ending up with large chunks of iceberg along with your nice little ribbons. There we go. Nicely sliced iceberg. I'll just transfer that to a little plate. And then if you need more, of course, you've got an entire, you know, head of lettuce left, so by all means, just continue. Go ahead and get our <clears throat> meat moving around a little bit.
Give it a quick scrape. Make sure that there's not much sticking to the bottom. And then what we'll do is we will add our seasoning now. Again, I've got about a tablespoon here, and I'm just going to kind of sprinkle it over the top. If you need a little bit more, feel free. And then we're just going to kind of get it mixed through. And again, there's no cornstarch or any of those thickening agents in this, so your meat is not going to look like sludge, <laughs> like it sometimes does when you use those prepackaged seasonings. But you are going to get a wonderful aroma coming out of this. And we'll just get this nice and mixed. You're going to want to grab a little bit of meat to test and just make sure you have enough seasoning on there. If not, go ahead and add some more. We'll add a little bit of water. And what that'll help do is kind of break up some of the bits that are stuck to the bottom of the pan, give you a little bit of really nice depth of flavor from the fond and help to kind of mix the seasoning so that it adheres to everything. I like to add just a little bit first, let it kind of boil off, and then add the rest. So we'll turn this down to medium low, just so that it starts simmering. And rest of the water, wasn't much left. We're just gonna let that simmer. Grab one little, one little spoonful here. Give it a taste. Well, that is good. <clears throat> Give me just a little bit more seasoning. There we are. All right, so we'll let that kind of simmer away. We'll come back to our accoutrement plate. And we'll get our cheese going. So I've got a cheese grater here. I always use the like medium sized blades, uh, not the giant one, which I've never used on anything, honestly. Um, and not the tiny like grater or the super small ones over here but I'll use like the, the medium-sized ones. And I'll take my block of cheese. I'll usually cut off just about an inch of cheese. Like so. If you get a little bit of lettuce on there, just scrape it off. Won't affect your cheese. And then the side of the cheese that you grate against the grater is going to affect how long the individual strands of cheese are. So if you want nice short pieces of cheese, use this side, and you'll get little, you know, inch and a half wide little strips of cheese when you do that, like so, or like so, I should say. Then if you want longer strips of cheese, just make sure you're using the longer side, like this one, where if I do this, I'll get a piece of cheese that's almost double the, double the length. So it really comes down to how long you want your little shredded cheese bits. And if you don't care, just use whichever side is more comfortable for you. I tend to prefer the longer ones. No size jokes, please. And we'll go ahead and just flatten our hand and shred to the best of our ability through our grater. There we go.
And then the same thing as with our lettuce. We'll just go ahead and kind of give it a nice little mix. Pick it up onto a plate. And we are ready to build our tacos. Now, some people like to chop up tomatoes and onions and other little bits to kind of put onto their tacos. And I don't because I've already got all of those things built up into my pico de gallo. So if I want to add any of those things to my tacos, I'll just use my salsa. So here we go. Water has evaporated off. We've got some lovely seasoned taco filling over here, whether you're using a meat substitute or chicken or turkey or ground beef or whatever it is that you're doing. It'd be nice and cooked and flavorful. Give it just another taste. Oh, yeah. There we go. All that's left is to grab some shells of your choice. In my case, I like the crispy corn tortillas, crispy corn shells. I'll go ahead and grab a couple, and I'll just build my tacos right here on my cutting board. Now, rather than leave this on and drying off or burning to the bottom of the pan, I'll turn it on low, just to kind of keep it warm while people are serving. And here we go. Got a good amount of meat into each taco shell, good amount of filling into each taco shell. There we go. We'll switch back over here. I like to actually start with a little bit of guacamole. Just on the bottom. Not a very thick bit, just a little bit. And the reason I do this is it kind of insulates a little bit against some of that heat coming right off of the meat. Some people really like it when their cheese melts in their taco. I, I don't. And that's just uh, whatever floats your boat. We'll do that. We'll add a little bit of lettuce on top of the guacamole. And then on top of the lettuce, we'll do a little bit of salsa. That way the salsa can kind of fill in all the little crevices. We get our tomato, we get our onion. Oops. Need my lettuce in that one first. There we go. Go ahead and lettuce ourselves up. And then we'll salsa ourselves up. And then last, but certainly not least, we will cheese ourselves up. And then fill ourselves up with delicious tacos. All right. So here we go, everybody. Beautiful taco dinner. You should have a wonderful bowl of guacamole, as well as a delicious bowl of salsa ready to go. Hopefully, if you guys did not give this a try this evening, you will give it a try later this week, maybe on Taco Tuesday. A wonderful way to put together a dinner that can serve a bunch of different people. Um, it's fairly simple to make. You can make these a day in advance and let them just kind of sit in the fridge and then just do the taco stuff the day of. It's a really fun, 
group activity, if you will. It's something you can make while you're entertaining guests, while you're chatting with people, etc. So hopefully I'll give this a try. It's been another wonderful Cook Along Live. Thank you all so much for coming on this journey with me over the past year. And I'm looking forward to uh, great things coming down the pipeline this year on Cook Along Live. So if you're not already, subscribe to me on uh, YouTube. That's where I'm doing these primarily. Although you can also find me on Facebook and on Twitch. Um, and you can get a bunch of other cooking content, aviation content, and a bunch of other things there. If you want the recipes or the ingredients lists before the actual show, um, follow me on Instagram. I post all of my uh, recipes there the week leading up to the Sunday Cook Along and the Cook Along Live. You can find here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch.tv every Sunday at 4.30 Pacific time. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a wonderful rest of your week, and we'll cook along next week. Thank you.